uniformity is honestly boring. You know what I mean? Like yes. it, 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 it looks, you're not going to have any innovation. You're not going to have creativity. I can, you know, I, I mean, there's, there's just so many things in the disability community that we come up with that are just cool because we, you know, are used to adapting the spaces. And it, it's the same way even for all minority groups because our perspectives, you know, lend to the conversation and make things better. And then you're also creating a space for the next person. Many people want to navigate life with peace and joy, but struggle to connect to their intuition. They find themselves overwhelmed, burned out, and frustrated. My name is Francesca Phillips, and I'm obsessed with spirituality and psychology and how the two can intersect to help you live a successful and intuitive life. I believe each of us can accomplish amazing things through balance and healthy habits instead of burnout. Consider this your go-to resource for where spiritual wellness and mindful productivity meets practical wisdom. If you're craving positivity and want to know how to find the answers within, instead of searching endlessly without, then you're in the right place. Get ready to feel supported and inspired. This is the Good Space Podcast. You're listening to the Good Space Podcast, episode number 16. Before we dive in, I want to give my warm appreciation to our reviewer of the week, Altamira Blog. And they say, Finding the Good Space Blog gave me the gift of establishing a morning routine. This really is a good space that can inspire habits to help improve your day. So many good episodes. Thank you so much, Altamira Blog, for sharing your kind words. I'm happy a morning routine changed your life like it did mine, and I'm grateful for you. If you're listening now and want your own morning routine, make sure to download my free guide linked in the show notes. If you want to be highlighted in an upcoming episode and help further the mission of The Good Space, make sure to subscribe and give us a review on Apple Podcasts so I can then highlight your review in an upcoming episode. It only takes a minute. You can pause the episode and come right back. Make sure to screenshot this episode on your phone and tag us on your Instagram story at findyourgoodspace, hashtag the good space to let me know that you're joining in today as you know that I love to share those screenshots on our stories too. All right, let's begin. Andrea Levant is founder and president of Levant Consulting Inc., LCI a social impact communications firm that offers cutting edge corporate development and content marketing for brands and nonprofits. LCI's specialty is helping brands speak disability with confidence. As a communications consultant and inclusion specialist, Andrea has over a decade of experience working with programs that support youth and adults with disabilities and other underserved populations. Her professional roles and personal advocacy have presented her with a variety of notable opportunities to share messages and prompt change for people with disabilities across the globe. She currently serves as the impact producer for Netflix feature-length documentary Crip Camp, where she is charged with leading the campaign's efforts to promote understanding of disability as a social justice issue and build across lines of difference. Andrea is a strong advocate for exploring disability from an intersectional lens, and offers a unique perspective on the initiatives that she supports. Today's conversation is going to be an interesting and exciting one. Before we jump in, I want to call a spade a spade and set the foundation for the conversation. Many spiritual influencers, authors, etc. talk about manifesting and how we're 100% responsible for our outcomes. And that principle is true. We are 100% responsible. But I also want to call out the fact that the world operates on the premise of power being external, which if you listen to episode seven, you know what I'm talking about. But to give a refresher, that means not everyone is given an equal opportunity to have the best outcome for their life. That there's a system humans live within that don't give the same resources or attention to everyone equally. To deny that fact would be toxic and counterproductive to the true expansiveness of spirituality. We are all one. Dr. Wayne Dyer addresses this in his book, Happiness is the Way. He says there are different atrocities in the world that can cause anger in each of us, and rightfully so. Then he says to use that anger to inspire aligned action. We have a duty to respond to displays of external power that work to disempower others. At the same time that we work to grow and expand ourselves individually, it's important to recognize how things are happening in the world around us. The world doesn't operate fully yet on sound spiritual principles so we need to not turn a blind eye, which is why I'm so excited to chat with Andrea Levant about her work in diversity, inclusion, and intersectionality. Welcome, Andrea, and thank you so much for being on the show today. 
Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so glad you're here. I know that we actually worked together, just loved your spirit and the way that you think about things. And I know we connected a lot on like the spiritual level and just that idea of serving and helping people. And so I'm really grateful to know you and to now get to share you with my audience. So thank you. Yay. Thanks so much. Thrilled. Yay. (laughs) Okay. I know it will. So before we jump in, would you mind telling us what does your spiritual practice look like? That's great. I identify as a Christian or more recently really like to say a follower of Jesus. I feel like there's a lot of unfortunate, gosh, just portrayal of Christianity right now. And so um, it's following the principles that Jesus, when he walked the earth, um, is really my goal. And so my spiritual practice really looks like you know, studying, praying, continual conversation. Like I've really tried to lean into what it looks like to be praying without ceasing. Like what does it mean to just be in continual conversation and asking? And I think uh, even still to really focus on the power of words and like knowing that words, God created the world with words. Bible talks about like the power of life and death being in our tongue. And so um, I've also more recently just been like declaring good things over my life and what are the things that I, you know, believe to see and, you know, whether it's around health, whether it's around business, whether it's around, you know, wealth or family or whatever. I also really think it's important to be in relationship with other folks that are like-minded in that way. Um, Those are the people that really keep me grounded and and thoughtful and out focusing less on myself I would say you know and and trying to make sure that I'm I'm looking at things holistically just this morning I had a friend that was like are you breathing are you taking time to meditate you know that kind of stuff and and honestly that is probably really key I think it's just you know when we think about what the church looked like back in the very, very early days. And it talks about them doing life together. Like, you know, they, they, they ate together, they lived together, they, you know, all of that. Um, While obviously we're in a virtual world, I still think that because of the nature of technology, um, that relationship is important. So, yeah. Wow. You said a lot of powerful things. And I especially love the fact that you pointed out that God created the world with the word. Your word is so powerful. And that just struck a deep chord with me. So thank you for sharing that. And also, it sounds like you have really great friends. Did you guys promise to each other? Like, did you have to verbally say, oh, remind me to breathe? Or is it kind of, was it a natural thing? Like, how did you get to that point? That's a really good question. So we are very, a couple of my friends in particular are, we kind of ask one another like, how can I support you or what? And we all have very different personalities. And I'm a very introspective person. I'm an Enneagram four. So I'm always thinking a lot about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I like reflection and I like to, to kind of muddle in my stuff. And then, you know, I have friends that are like, not so much so they don't like, you know what I mean? So I think it's been learning what one another needs and then and asking and say but also being bold enough to say you may not want to hear this or let me check you on this and and knowing that the people have my best interests at heart or that we have one another's best interests at heart and it may not settle well in the moment but uh when you know that there's nothing but love there and when there's no other motive Um, You know, I think especially for those of us that are very career driven and we have, you know, these relationships kind of in other spaces, having friendships that have no other goal, but to, you know, just be supportive of one another is really important because I know for me in the work that I do, I have a lot of community based on the different communities that I represent. And that's great and a lot of times we need each other for different types of reasons but it's also really nice to have friends that have almost no idea what you do they know just enough to be supportive and to provide feedback and to help but also um they're not tied to it in any way other than to like 
support your growth and to really support your dreams. So, yeah. That's great. And how do you get to that point where you can have differences of opinions or maybe like you said, it's a tough conversation because they have to bring something up, but you still have that love. So what does that take on a spiritual foundational level to be able to do that? That's real. Man, these are great questions. Um, <laughs> especially because I, I had, it was literally this morning where I had a friend that was like, okay, how, because I was talking about how stressed I was. And she was like, okay, how candid do you, she didn't use the word candid, but it's kind of like, how candid do you want me to be? And I'm like, tell me the truth. And I think for me personally, it has taken my trust in God and like knowing that he speaks through people and believing that if his spirit is in all of us, um, and sometimes depending on where I'm at, and I'm not, I believe that he speaks through the word. And he speaks, you know, very much through other people. And so like the word is in like the Bible, we open it up and he can speak, you know, to us. And then he also uses other people. And so because of past experiences where, you know, feeling rejection and a lot of those things that, that we experience in life, it has taken a level of trust in first in him and, you know, knowing that he um, has placed people in my life with purpose going, okay, this may be uncomfortable right now. This may, you know, hit you wrong. And I may not respond in the best way in the moment, um, but they know, but that's why it's important to have people in your life that also know that and are like, it's cool. It's fine. It'll hit you later. All good. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I definitely have a few friends like that too, where Maybe I didn't respond in the best way possible, but they love me enough and know me enough. But I think the key part is, well, first of all, you have a lot of humility to be able to be open like that, to admit, okay, maybe I don't see everything. Maybe I don't know everything. So I'm going to be open to what they're saying. But also there's that foundation of trust. Like you said, you trust that they're in your life for a reason. You trust that God can speak to you through other people, which I've experienced so many times as well. And I just love that openness and that spirit of humility that you have. So tell us a little bit about your work and what you do and what brought you to the work that you're doing today. Like what was your journey getting to where you are? I have a consulting firm that uh, focuses on strategy and communication, specifically corporate and, and nonprofit um, spaces. But our, our lens is really, which you helped us come up with this, so I can't even deny. <laughs> but our slogan is, you know, really um, helping people speak, speak disability with confidence. So I have a physical disability. I'm a wheelchair user, have been my, in most of my life, was diagnosed uh, when I was two years old. And so would you mind sharing what you were diagnosed with or? Yeah, so it's called spinal muscular atrophy and it, it looks different on different people. But for me, um, I'm a wheelchair user. And so formal educational background is in public relations. And, um, but I worked for years in a nonprofit space around youth development and specifically supporting young people with disabilities. And um, what I found along the way was that a lot of people are fearful of talking about disability. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it. They don't know how to engage people with disabilities. It's entirely too different still, even though people with disabilities represent the largest minority group in the world and one in four people have you know, disabilities that it's still so taboo. And specifically, when we look at kind of all facets of life, minority group, where for most of us, you know, I, I grew up in a Black family, so you have that identity. Those of us that, you know, you see women's rights, you see all of these things, but for um, disability, it's often hard to find one's people. And so, and, and, and that means, how does that translate into the employment space? How does that translate into recreation? How does it translate into churches and other, you know, spiritual bodies and places. And so 
I just really felt it was um, important to kind of bridge my gifts, which were which are around um, communication and writing and helping people develop, you know, strategies and, and bring that together with my lived experience as a disabled Black woman. And so that's what I do is help companies with their content development, with their overall strategies around how to employ people with disabilities, how to market to people with disabilities, how to reach them in general, how to ensure they're part of the conversation. So that ultimately, you know, the world is better. That's great. And I'm really glad that you brought up the fact that a lot of times people just don't know how to engage differences or to include differences or to like to broaden the scope in the, in their life and in the world and, and work and all those things. And so I want to talk about why diversity is viewed in such a narrow lens um, and what do people typically miss? Because we've talked about in, in previous conversations that God creates differences for a reason. And I believe that we're all here to learn and grow spiritually and differences create opportunities to learn for the people who are experiencing the differences, for the people who interact with people that have certain differences. And I believe they're there to help us each overcome and change perceptions on a spiritual level. So again, I want to know why diversity is viewed in such a narrow lens and what is it that people typically miss? Yeah. So I think people know what they know and they, they focus on what they see and they focus on what are essentially the hot topics, just like over the past couple of months, we've seen Black Lives Matter trending in such a way that all of a sudden everybody is on, and I say this as a Black woman, so I'm not saying it in any other way, but what I consider to be the truth, which is, you know, um, kind of jumping on this bandwagon, and Black Lives have been around forever. So like, obviously, you know, um, the whole concept of even this, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative or you know having HR departments that have DNI um, folks is is a thing and yet disability is often left out of those those conversations and again I think it's because it is not a cookie cutter process to engage because we all are so different. I even say for myself I mean I have plenty of friends with the same exact diagnosis and it looks very different on each person. Our needs are different when it comes to certain perspectives when you don't, like I said, you don't see it, but also, yeah, until it hits you close, we often don't address it. And so I think that is why diversity narrative is so narrow. And then, you know, when it comes to disability too, a lot of people are concerned, well, how much is it gonna cost, you know, to make accommodations? Yeah, what is the sacrifice? Because to some other minority groups, and not all, but the investment looks different, right? And so in this case, there might be literal cost, whether that's attitudinal um, or uh, actual monetary costs, that makes a difference. And, and honestly, when it comes to disability, it really feels like in a lot of spaces that people just, until somehow or another, it hits home for a person that they don't really think about it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so... I like how you said that sometimes it just doesn't hit home for them until it does, or if they have an experience or like a reason to, even though I feel like you don't need a reason to care about everyone and, and try to include everyone. And I know, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting topic, but why would you say, if someone were to ask you, why is it important to be aware and open to the differing needs of others? Like what is not the benefit, but like, just why, why is it important? Well, a, we're all human beings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we all, were, depending on where your belief system lies, you know, we're created in the image of the creator. I think there's that. Um, I think also that different perspectives really make us better. Because if you think about the people that you've gotten to know that are different from you, how that has expanded every aspect of who who you are and not only for you but for other people the experience of accepting people um you know creating space for people bringing different so not only bringing different voices to the table but also 
having them as decision makers and even maybe being quiet sometimes like uniformity is honestly boring you know what I mean like yes. it, it, it it looks you're not gonna have any innovation you're not gonna have yeah just a, a creativity I can there's just so many things in the disability community that we come up with that are just cool because we you know are used to adapting the spaces and it, it's the same way even for all minority groups, because our perspectives, you know, lend to the conversation and make things better. And then you're also creating a space for the next person. And I think just demonstrating, you know, your commitment to, yeah, to just kind of loving everyone and, and valuing everyone's life. I mean, that's, that's really yeah. the main thing. We all have value, no matter who we are. Oh, I, it's wonderful. You said so many great things. And I know even working with you, I now ask different questions when I'm dealing with people. I now see different perspectives. And I'm so grateful for that because like you said, uniformity is boring. I mean, being open to learning and getting new perspectives and including you know, everyone is a gift and it really is a benefit to us all. And I know that there have been times where I feel mentally stuck and I felt like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to dream bigger, but then I watch a show and it sparks something in me, or I have a conversation with you or someone and you like make me think bigger. And it's like, I wouldn't have thought that way had I not had that conversation or watched that show. So it's almost like allowing the space for new experiences, new voices, and yes, just all of it. Yes. I love that. And, um, on episode seven, I talked about the idea of authentic power and how external power is just the physical senses. Like you basically, um, you only see the world through those senses and you, it's hard for you to go beyond that. And power externally is seen as something that you fight for or you steal or you borrow. It's a very like you know, finite thing. Whereas authentic power is when you are open and you're spacious and you know that it comes from within. And I feel like the more that we as spiritual beings having a physical experience, the more that we operate from authentic power, I think we will find that space expanding within us to make sure that everyone is included and seen and heard. So how can we have a better awareness of being inclusive and helping others have a better space in their life? Because I really believe being spiritual isn't about just self-focus. It's about growing the self so that we can pour goodness into the collective. So how can we have that better awareness? I think it's looking at who is already at your table and inviting more people, <laughs> um, inviting the people that look different. That now we have so much at our fingertips in terms of even it, it doesn't necessarily even mean physically inviting them, but actually following and being quiet and listening, saying, you know, I, yeah, I want to hear like who else. Who else am I not creating space for in, in my life? Again, not necessarily that it's I'm talking to you directly, but that you're following on your social media channels, you know, that you're listening to their, their podcasts and that you're, you know, for those of us that have privilege and influence, when you go into a space and you realize everybody here looks like me or, you know, has the same experience or that you that you call it out and that you and that you aim to get to know the right people I can't tell you gosh my every day every single day not a day goes by where um I don't get a can you recommend you know certain people for this particular thing can you recommend a group of disabled people right now it's specifically can you recommend a group of disabled people of color and um, while I'm happy to do that, I'm looking forward to the day when my able-bodied or non-disabled allies can have those resources, you know what I'm saying? And know those people without having to come to the people. And it's the same with Blackness and, and where they're like, okay, I need to highlight somebody Black on my profile. Can you tell me something, somebody Black? That's really unfortunate if you don't have a relationship, you know what I'm saying? Um, with somebody that can speak to any 
specific experience. And then, yeah, having conversations, moving beyond tokenism, you know, so that they're just there. They have actual decision-making power and voice in spaces. And that's how it's going to grow. And that's how it's going to get better. And I think from a disability lens, what's really important is that you're not seeing it from a place of pity. Um, but you are, you know, if you're going back to what you talked about, power, there is, uh, seriously, I mean, my, like we were people, no matter the experience, to be seen as sad or less than or, or um, you know, in any way, shape or form, like we're not the same. That's not, that's not doing us any favors at all. And so it really is saying, I value you and I want to hear from you and I want to create space for you. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as allowing more diverse voices in your life, do you just suggest going on Instagram and just exploring and being curious and seeing who resonates with you? Um, Because I'm just thinking too, like I know over the past couple of months, I've found a lot more diverse voices and it was through like an Instagram post or like different things. So like, is that probably the best way to do it just to like explore and be curious about what voices would connect with you or? Yeah, I think so. Because I mean, even within the disability space, I don't connect with every person with a disability. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like it does generally boil down to values of different for different people, um, obviously. And so I think that it is, Yes, but it's also expanding. And so, I mean, right now, especially (laughs) given our current, you know, world, I think that that's a great way to start. I think it's following certain hashtags that you maybe, you know, have not thought about. So the following in the past for us, it's like disability pride, it's um, black disabled and proud, it's black disabled lives matter. In addition to black lives matter, it's, you know, disability justice. So there's, I think it's, that's a great way, way to begin. And then slide in some people's DMs and say, hey, I mean, we're like, um, one of the products I'm working on, we're doing a, um, a virtual series. And somebody reached out to me today, just um, said, I've been been watching on Sundays. And I was like, whoa, really? Thank you so much. Because I know they're a non-disabled person. And um, they were like, yeah, I need to know how to be a better ally. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, there are opportunities. It's to go into space, just because it has a specific label on the event, you know, it doesn't always mean that it's just for those people. So if it says disability in it and you want to know more, sign up for it. If it says, you know, um, unless they specifically say this group is for disabled people, um, because obviously there, there are moments when we all need our own individual spaces. But I think even from a, you know, there's so many organizations that even from a black, you know, blackness perspective, NAACP since the beginning of time has had white allies in it. Urban League, same way. So there are spaces that um, are not exclusive um, just to the specific people that they, you know, their specific target audience. There's always a secondary audience. That is so interesting and such a great point that you brought up because it's almost like in defining ourselves, we miss the ability to see ourselves in other spaces as well. So it's almost like as soon as I can stop labeling myself as in a certain box, then maybe I can be more open to being curious and going into these other spaces. And I love that. I love that thought process. And I know already that I'm like, okay, great. I'm, <laughs> I want to change the way I think. I love going into other faith-based spaces. I mean, if we're, you know, straight and narrow, then how are we going to no, and how are we going to have, you know, enlightened conversation? So I'm like, yes, invite me to a, like, whatever, you know what I mean? Because I want to I know and I want to understand, you know, and that's the only way that I'm going to do it. If I isolate myself to a specific space or experience, then it's not helping. It's not helping anybody, really. Absolutely. And I know that when we first started working together, I've asked questions like this, and I'm sure with all of your clients, you've had people always ask, what's okay to say to someone who's disabled? Or like, 
Because the thing is, sometimes you don't know if acknowledging that you have a disability or diversity is the right thing to do. So it's kind of like, Ooh, I'm uncomfortable. So I just don't acknowledge it. Or like, what do you say? Like, how do you approach it correctly? Yeah. Well, I think number one, you ask, I think everybody is different. And, um, I think that there are kind of general, um, generalizations that I can make for, you know, a lot of us, I would say, but for me, for example, you could use colloquialisms and not offend me at all. So if you want to say you want to take a walk, I'm not going to be like, I can't walk. You know what I mean? Like, of course, yeah, let's, let's go for a walk. Um, I have, you know, but I do have perhaps other people that might feel differently, but I think it's, it's asking specifically when it comes to helping people. So, you know, I have, you know, friends with different physical disabilities where they, for example, say somebody falls, a lot of people will want to come to the rescue and like, oh my goodness, let me help. And it ends up making it worse because there's a specific way that they might need to get up. And so we jump into this help mode, whether it's, let me get the door for you. And it's like, you know, I want to open it for myself. Like we all have, A, we have bodily, like it's autonomy, like giving me the space to be who I want to, you know, be and all of that. Um, and so it's a simple ask, you know, can I help you? You know, do you need any, would you like for me to open the door for you? Would you like for me to, um, you know, help you get it? Whatever it might be. Again, because we're, we're all human beings and you wouldn't do that in most other spaces. So I think it's a lot of times people think that they have to speak up or over. Um, and I think that anything, it's passing the mic. So even if um, I go into a store and a clerk says, oh, you know, is there anything that she's looking for or anything? And, and my friend needs to say, you can ask her, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, so it's in the same way, you know, it's, it's that um, allow us space to even ask or yeah, for, or, and, and that to speak for ourselves. That's what I would say for sure. That, that's really helpful. So almost like, it's not like you have to pretend that um, you don't have the wow. disability or the diversity, but like you said, asking, like it doesn't hurt to be like, hey, may I get the door for you? Yes. May I help you with something? It's just being more vocal yes. and acknowledging and having them feel, like you said, having the space to speak for yourself and to make yeah. the decision for yourself. I think another big thing that we hear a lot and, um, and there was the conversation, I think you and I talked about this maybe, this whole concept of like where he said, I don't see, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't see race. And then and there's problem there. And I, it's the same with disability. I've, I've gotten that. So, oh my gosh, I don't even see your disability. And I think at one time, you know, I, I appreciated that because, you know, I didn't want people to necessarily look and see disability. But what I have learned in my, as I've aged, is that I need you to see the disability because I need you to acknowledge that my experience is not the same as yours. And so um, in the same way as, as a black woman, my experience is not going to be the same. And if you don't acknowledge that, if you don't see that, and some of us don't have visible disabilities, so I'm not saying it in that way, but what I'm really saying is be considerate of um, my experience, whatever I choose to disclose. So if I don't bring it up in terms of, for example, if I have a mental health need and I haven't said anything about it, you know what I mean? Then obviously you're not, A, you may not know, or it, you know, it's not your place necessarily. If you invited me to your house and you have steps and, and I'm like coming over, I get there and it, oh my God, I completely didn't even think about it. I just never think about your disability. Yeah, that's a problem. Like, I wish, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, please think about my disability because um, now I can't access the space. And of course, where I'm at in life now is I tend to ask or somebody asks me to come over. And, and thankfully, most people in my life now will ask, you know, hey, what do you need? But the other, the flip side of that is that don't make an assumption that we don't have a solution for a problem or an issue such that you don't invite us to the space. So for example, I also 
um, have not been invited to things because people make an assumption that it's a, an event at somebody's house and they automatically go, oh, I want to have a game night. My place isn't accessible. Um, it has steps. So I'm just not going to invite Andrea because I know that she can't get in. And honestly, I have a three foot ramp that like um, folds up and can go in the car and come with me. So it's also like, give me the choice. So I love when people say, hey, Andrea, I would love to invite you to this event. I know that it's not accessible. A, please try to find an accessible place. Please try. But hey, I want to, you know, host this thing at my house. And it has a, it has a, a step. Do you have any recommendations, anything that, that we can do. And then I can make the choice. Yeah, actually, I have this ramp. Would love to come over. At least it doesn't look like exclusionary because there have been so many things where I turn on Facebook or Instagram and it's like my whole group of friends or like a bunch of people that I, I know were not for my disability. I would have invited, been invited to this. Oh, man. So let me know if this is like a similar vein, but it's almost like you are a spirit and a human first and foremost, but I must acknowledge that your experience is different. Just like if someone's vegan, I don't not invite them to my house because they don't eat meat. I say, can I make you a dish that you like that's vegan or you know, I have friends who have dealt with sexual abuse and it's like, you are a person, you're a human being but I know that your experience is a little different than mine. And so I might deal with, like, I might, you know, try to include them or engage them in a different way than I would someone else. Is that like a similar? Yeah. It's, or it's like, Hey, I don't want to exclude you from this event that we're having at Maggiano's. It's going to be all meat. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're we're aiming to have, you know, options. Um, We're going to have a vegan option. Totally. And also don't want you to be uncomfortable. Just letting you know there's going to be meat there. You know, like it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's stuff like that. Um, that, that it's like the awareness of, it's not surprising. I've thought about you. I know this about you. And so let's go from there. You know, it's funny because this is going to sound really silly, but I used to work at a bank when I was 18 years old is before I worked in the music industry. It was like the job that kept things going until I could find work. And I remember this has always been a life lesson. I return to a lot is when I had to sell credit cards or, you know, open new accounts. I used to be so terrified because I'm like, I don't want to push something on someone that they don't want. But then my manager said, well, how do you know what they want? How do you know if they need something or not? So she said, offer it and ask them and they can make the choice. And so I'm like, it's like a theme that comes up. And so it's the same thing. It's like, how am I supposed to know what you want, Andrea? So I should ask you and I should let you know and let you choose. Exactly. Because I mean, there's so many, I've got stories for days, but yeah, when people, again, make the assumption that, oh, well, we did this because I'm like, thank you for thinking of me. That's not going to work. Why? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like, it's a conversation and that's, that's what it is. Just like, you know, the uncom- uncomfortable conversations. It may be uncomfortable, but trust me, I would rather you ask. Yeah. And I think it comes back to the, on a spiritual level, that's authentic power is allowing everyone the choice and giving them the space to choose and to make that decision for themselves because when, when we don't give each other that space or that decision or that power, it limits and it no longer becomes an evolving or like an opportunity to evolve. And so, yeah, that's really powerful. Um, so now that we're more digital now than ever, what, what does inclusion look like as far as, um, how we can be inclusive with others? I know we can listen to more diverse voices Um, You've talked before about online events and how you can make it more inclusive, but how can we be more proactive in that, in this digital age? I think it's the same thing, specifically if you're like hosting an event and you put on there, if you have something where people are registering, then you're you're asking if people, how can we accommodate you? Do you have any access needs is the way that we tend to, we, 
make assumptions that, you know, there will be people in the space that need sign language interpreters, that need live captioning, that need, you know, they have other, you know, whether it's communication needs, it's, it's making things available digitally. So those in our spaces are, are like the low hanging fruits. Um, and then after that, I think it's, again, it's at, you can ask just as much in a Facebook post, an Instagram post, a survey monkey, whatever it is, what people need in order to feel included in the space. And I, and I think it's that simple. What, how can we, you know, support your full inclusion in the space? That's it. And some people might be like, it may not even have to be disability related. You know what I'm saying? It could be, I am a visual learner. Is it possible for you to send out the PowerPoint before? That kind of stuff, just being open. That's great. I think that's wonderful. What does the term coming as I am mean to you? Um, it means wherever I'm at in life, whatever my brain space is in the moment, <laughs> whatever I'm looking like in the moment, um, just being able to be and with no expectation, where it, with no judgment. And I, I know for me, as a physically disabled person, one of the spaces that I tend to feel the most uncomfortable is going into any new faith community, specifically church, because of stigma around disability and, you know, difference in that way. Um, and I think that, you know, because so many of our churches are still pretty segregated in a lot of ways, even if they call themselves multi multicultural, there tends to be a bend toward one or another, you know, things um, that you often, you know, I can often enter a space with the commonality of race or whatever, but disability tends to always stand out, specifically in churches, because you know, there's this concept of, you know, can we pray for you for healing? And, um, and, and so I have a lot of friends, honestly, the majority of my friends with disabilities that don't quote unquote do church because they don't mm. feel like they can come and come as they are, to be honest with you. Um, because they feel like somebody's going to try to fix them, that they need to be repaired in some way. Quite honestly, there are so many of us that are more broken inside than anything. And having a diagnosis or a disability is not the, that is an identifier of, of brokenness, in my opinion. Wow, that's really, really powerful. <laughs> so what are you most proud of accomplishing so far? It's the knowing that there are people who look like me in all, you know, different, you know, forms. It's like that one person. It reminds me of the parable of the sheep where Jesus like goes after the one. Based on the platform specifically that I have right now, a lot of people kind of know me in the disability space, but when I get the opportunities to, I met last week with a woman who is a, a parent of a, a young black boy with a disability. And, you know, she was just saying, oh my goodness, we've been following you and we watch it and all of this stuff. And that to me, I was like, this is why it's worth it because you're empowered, your son is empowered to know that they have value and that they deserve to be whoever it is that they want to be in the world and that the world needs to sp make space for them. And they have... And that's why I use the word empowered more than I use inspire. When we're empowered, it, it, it's something inside that's like, oh, wow, you know, I can do that and I can be that and I can go for it. And, and that doesn't mean from a standpoint of like a capitalist, like I got to get a job, I got to do this. It really just means that like, I'm great because I am. And when people see that, perhaps because they've had a conversation with me or whatever it may saw on Instagram post or whatever. That's what makes it, that's what I'm most proud of. Oh, that's great. So I have just a few more fun questions and then we'll, we'll make sure everyone can find you online and all that good stuff. So what are you excited about most right now? 
oh my goodness, this weekend I am leaving to go get my service dog. I've been on the waiting list for two years. <laughs> yes, I have been on the waiting list for two years. And they caught, they sent an email a couple months ago and it's COVID and all of the things, but um, we're gonna get on the road and I get to go to California for a couple of weeks and train and bring home a dog. So I am so excited, yes. Okay. <laughs> I am freaking out right now. I mean, you probably know this, but especially people who have been a follower of mine for a while, they know how obsessed I am with dogs. They are literal angels and furry bodies. And seriously, I'm going to tell everyone I know that you're getting a dog now because, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. I hope I get a text message at yes. least with a picture. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. Okay, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> And okay, so my last question is, what's a way that you've gotten out of your comfort zone recently? Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm living outside of my comfort zone right now. Work has really taken off in a way that I can appreciate. And yet I am a professed introvert. If anything, an ambivert. So I don't mind being around people. I just converse conversation like all day long. Yeah, what, what I've kind of said lately is that I'm living in this place of like comfortable discomfort um, because I'm able to use the gifts that I know that God has placed inside of me to do the work that I wanted to do. But it doesn't look the way that I ever would have written, written the book, right? So, I mean, I spend my day in meetings and I, you know, am managing a team now, which I didn't see myself doing at least right now and having to make hard decisions and have hard conversations with people and tell them you can't say this and you can't do that and you know all of that and um again as kind of the softer completely non-confrontational like world peace type of person uh, yeah i'm living in a place of uh, where where god is really calling me outside of to be bold and i mean i think about it like joshua like just being bold and courageous and uh, that is not easy for me. And yet, finding my place. Good for you. I feel like I am sharing that discomfort as well because I just grew at my team and having, like you said, to make those decisions or to point things out and actually be the leader is like, oh, it's kind of scary sometimes. And yeah, no, I feel you on that. That's amazing though. Congratulations on everything you're accomplishing. And where can everyone find you online? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Andrea Lamont. So if, as long as you spell my name right, <laughs> um, there's an extra A there. Yeah, I'm pretty easy to find and pretty active these days, more so than it's been in a while. But there's a lot of conversations that we had and that, that need to be had. And there is a lot. And God, I believe, is using my voice to reach people. So. I'm, I'm just here to do what he's asking for. Good for you. We'll make sure that every platform you uh, just named will be in the show notes so that people can go to the description. You can click it. They can find you. And um, something that keeps popping in my mind is that God doesn't call the qualified. He yeah. qualifies the call. Absolutely. And yeah. so I feel like you're called where you're at and I can see him constantly growing and qualifying what it is that you need to accomplish. And I think that's amazing. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say before we sign off? No, I'm grateful. Um, you know, I think I'm the type of person that likes to, you know, build relationship, whether it's online or whatever. So feel free to, to reach out, to DM me, to email uh, the web job. Cause I like to, I don't, I'm just not a fan. I'm like, okay, we had that one conversation and that was cool. That's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and your spirit and your energy. It was just a wonderful conversation. Yeah. And we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> now it's time for an affirmation. I am open and accepting of my truest self and therefore am inclusive of every soul I meet. I embrace them with love and openness.
If you found today's tips inspiring or thought-provoking, share it right now on social media and make sure to tag me at Francesca A. Phillips or at Find Your Good Space and also weigh in in the comment section at findyourgoodspace.com. You can find links in the show notes. And if you have a spiritual or mindfulness problem that you want me to unpack on an upcoming The Good Space episode or an awesome manifesting story you want to share, give my podcast phone line a ring right now at 917-719-0867. Also, don't forget to download my free morning routine guide. It's what helps me reduce my anxiety, increase productivity, and so much more. The link to everything I mentioned is in the show notes. See you soon.